I thought I would like to have another go at the cake box challenge that BRM is setting people to do. The challenge is to build a model in an 8 by 8 inch by 6 inch box. And you don't actually have to build it in the box, but they're the dimensions of the model. And so I'm going to start on an 8 inch square cake base and then from that I'm going to build lots of model and detail. I'm going to build a more conventional railway this time rather than my science fiction one which I did first time round. This one is going to have a halt on it and a cow, a silly moo, which is going to be in the way of the train. So this one is going to have a story to it. It's going to be entertaining, you're going to look at it, it's going to tell you there's going to be a few little cameo things going on and a little touch of humour as well. And that's how this one is going to be different from my sci-fi one. Although that one was interesting. It did have a story too. It was a sort of tunnel and it made you think, I wonder where this is going. So this is the idea for Pixton Halt. The Halt is going to sit there, the railway track next to it. This is all going to be on a raised level, about an inch high. And this fencing will sit about there, like that. And there'll be a little sort of cliff. And that leads down to a bit of river with a fishing boat on it. Now I'm going to have a pug locomotive sitting on here. And he's stopped. And the reason he's stopped is because something has happened. On the other side of the halt is a field. And part of the fencing will have fallen down. And that has meant that the cows that are in the field can get out and one of them is going to sit there on the track. right? And it's not moving. It's stubborn. And these guys, the farmers or railway workers, whatever they are, they're trying to move it so the pug can carry on and doesn't run it over. I'm going to perhaps add some other little details there. Either a tree or a building like that, and a tractor, so the farmer's having a look in his tractor, and these are the other farmers. Also, I'm going to probably add a couple more cows there, having a look at their mate, just to see if they're alright. So there's a little scene going on here, a story, okay. Uh, fence has either been pushed down by the cow, because the grass is longer on this side, and either that's happened or it's fallen down it's taken advantage it's ended up sitting on the rails the pug has had to stop now why is the boat here well the boat is here because i'm going to put a little man there with a camera and he's photographing the action that ties it all in and gives it an aesthetic a creative flow that is a reason for every single element in here everyone's having a look and being nosy and then one final thing just to add a touch of humor standing on pixton hall there's going to be a Grim Reaper. Now either that's a Grim Reaper, it's a real Grim Reaper, or perhaps it's someone in fancy dress, but it's going to look funny because it'll look as though he's waiting for the cow. Do Grim Reapers wait for cows? I don't know, this one does. So a little scene, a little bit of story, and a little bit of humour, and that is the angle for Pixton Hall, subtitle, Silly Moo. So I'm using some loft insulation foam. That's going to give me a raised level on this model. Of course it goes without saying, be careful with knives. So there we have it. I'm sitting in there, ready to go. So for the next part, I'm going to use spray cans, these are car sprays, and I'm going to spray all of this with those three colours, black, red and grey primer. I'll put this on as well. I'm going to do it outside, it's dark so you, you can't see this part. I've done the grey, there's no real art to this, just do it and see what happens. I'll do red next. Here we are, a few seconds later, the brick red is added. Now, I'm going to do the black, and this is the clever part. You do it at angles, 
and sparingly, not too much, and it then builds up a sort of variation. It makes it look really nice. Now, our two minutes later, it took me a little bit longer to do this. And now I've added the variation. Now, you should be able to see the sort of variation that gives. I can then put grasses and gravels and other things on here. And that colour will show through if there's any gaps. And that looks like mud and that's fine. I've glued this track down and I've just put a slight flex in it. Just because it is Pico Flexi Track. So now I'm going to paint PVA glue on here, stick down some ballast and other materials and then I'm going to use some bird grit and put some rocks around here. Now we're at the stage, now the ballast is glued on, the boat is glued on, I've got to add some more grasses. And this is one method I use for putting on grasses and things and I can seem to do it quite accurately like this. Not everyone can. And it seems to work for me. I can get nice even coverage. So I'm adding some scenic variation I'm using different colour grasses. Now because the fence is going to go along here, on this side of the fence, I want the grass to be shorter and browner. So I'm using different colours, scatters and browns and mud, muddy colours with a view to looking like the field has been a bit churned up by the cows and the grass isn't so good on this side, which is why they want to come over through the fence and eat the grass on here. And I might put some longer grass strands by using static grass to stand up a little. I'm not sure yet. I'll see how it looks. So now I spray some water gently over the model. And I've mixed together some PVA glue and water in here with a drop of detergent that's most important because that breaks down the surface tension and then I syringe or pipette this mixture on. Now what that will do is it will just blend in nicely and glue down all of those items and overnight or in a couple of days that should be dry. If you do get clumps like this you really got to get rid of them so just spray them with more water or if you can just touch it with your finger very gently to disperse it then that should dry okay usually the white PVA dries clear but not when it's in a really thick clump. I thought I would get the tractor putting some tractor marks. Actually rather than varnish this time I'm going to try and use some wooden scenics water effects. So with this it's a matter of pasting on the stodgy material and brushing it into the places you want it to go and it dries clear and it should have a sort of watery effect. So here it is the next day now, and there's a lot more detail added. Onto the boat, I've added a mast and some rigging. That's of course a weather boat. I've also added some static grass. So this grass on that side of the fence that's not down is a lot longer, which is why the cow moved over from its little muddy field, which hasn't got much grass in it at all. I've also added a wheelbarrow and a ladder and a sack next to the shed and there's some barbed wire and a barrel between the fence and the halt and so more and more little details. I really like the 
weeds and that growing on the side of the little cliff there. That's really nice, I think. Pleased with how that came out. And another thing I've noticed is that it has bands of colour. We've got brown, grey, green and blue. It's aesthetically quite nice. Now one other thing I need to add a two figures. Well, it's two things really, isn't it? And then also this, I'm changing the locomotive for a highly detailed packet, just because it looks nicer.